So the Android developer preview is dead and long live Android Canary, which is the new pathway for developer builds for your Android phones. What does this mean and what changes are present? Well, hold your horses and I'll get right into it in just a second. If you love Android though, like we love Android, then how about hitting that subscribe button for more content just like this, diving into every single machination of our favorite mobile OS. Cheers. So the big news is that Google today announced a significant evolution in its pre-release program for Android devices. Instead of developer previews, we're now getting an Android Canary release channel. This is a great name. I think it makes a lot of sense. The goal is basically to provide earlier, more consistent access to in-development features for your mobile. Google says the structure of the current developer preview approach has inherent limitations according to themselves, including things not tied to a release channel, making it hard for them to, oh well, basically manually flash them to your devices every time. Uh, every single time a cycle would restart, which caused problems for people. And because previews were tied to the next designated Android release, they were only available during the earliest part of that particular cycle. So once a platform version reached that beta stage, which is when most of you are probably going to install it, and obviously the one that we'd recommend you install, the preview track would end, creating a gap where features that were promising but not yet ready for beta and officially no official channels for feedback were therefore available as a result of that. Android Canary or the Canary program is the solution for this, or at least that's what Google thinks. And now this instantly reminds me potentially of those nightly ROM updates that we may have had. So for instance, you might get things like little updates, tweaks, tuning enhancements, and you could effectively see Android evolve in real time now. We don't know yet how often Google is gonna push updates to the Android Canary program. It could be weekly, monthly, or if they're absolutely insane as far as I'm concerned, daily, and that will be very much like the ROMs of yesteryear. Obviously the closest program run internally is Chrome Canary, which is almost constantly evolving, hence the obvious naming convention here. This will allow you to try out, provide input on new features and plan behavior changes in the earliest stages of development. These changes may, oh, they might not always make it to a stable Android release, but they're gonna be prototyped within this particular version of Android. So the Canary release channel is technically gonna be run in parallel with the beta program. The beta program remains a way for you to try a more polished set of likely soon to be released features as well. So that is sticking around, so you know, don't need to worry about that. The idea is that you run Canary builds with your apps and your services if you're a developer to see if any of Google's in-development features cause the kind of problems that would break your application, break your phone, that kind of thing, and maximize the time that you can get a feedback loop effectively so Google can have time to address any problems or concerns that are encountered widely. As I mentioned, the Android beta program is still in force, so no worries about that. Regular stable updates ain't changing either, so it's just this new, more bleeding edge track being added for the full hardy or the developer out there, which is probably the person who should be trying this out on their devices. The installation process though, at least as it stands right now, is gonna require you to use the Android Flash tool, which does mean it will wipe your phone, which I actually didn't even realize myself. I just dived into this straight away. I should have known this as I've done this enough times too, but hey, I'm prone to mistakes just like you are. So don't repeat my mess up. That's what I'm getting at here. So if you wanna do, try this out for yourself, back it up, put it on a device that is gonna be your backup device. Don't use it on your main or you might have some problems. There are also gonna to be tons and tons of bugs and potential changes that render things on your device unusable or very, very unstable. This is gonna be insanely different to the developer program that we've tried before, and they're not always perfect in their own right. Google even says, in their own marketing for this, well not marketing, their actual blog for this, that it shouldn't be used on your primary device, or if you're gonna do so, tread very, very cautiously. I'm actually interested to see how we're going to get the updates though. I think daily updates could be a little bit overwhelming or overkill for most people, apart from the most, well, the ardent developer out there. Even with a backup pixel running on the Canary track, I think this might start to get really, really annoying. I think personally, I stick to those public beta versions and it's something I would do if I weren't doing this already. Let me potentially brick my device to show you what's going on. That's what I'm trying to say here. Don't risk your own phone. Don't be as stupid as I am. Just, yeah, I guess it's a perk of the job, if, if that makes sense. Anyway, getting on with it a little bit. If there's one thing to note here, I think this could potentially or essentially put an end to pre-release software leaks, mainly because Android is now effectively being developed in public the knock-on effects are potentially quite massive here. We could get to see even more experimental functionality or features that might never once ever been made available in betas. They could be there one week, they could be gone the next. 
Maybe I'm painting a little bit of a picture of the Wild West of Android development, which it probably isn't going to be, but it's genuinely really, really exciting for someone who covers this day in, day out. I've actually not been this excited about Android for a few years, and a lot of that is technically due to Material 3 Expressive, which I'm really excited by, but this is a step beyond that. It's giving me early Cyanogen mod vibes, and I am totally totally here for it and I'm sure a lot of you will be as well. Right now though I will say it's very close to the Android 16 QPR on beta builds if you're running that on your device so not all that much different. There are a few changes don't get me wrong they're very small but let's get into these and yeah you know that's our thing here anyway so let's get into some changes. So once you flash the Android Canary build on your device using the Android flash tool there's a few little tweaks to the lock screen depending on the clock that you're using. I think the spacing at least to my eye is a little bit different that could just be the devices that I'm actually comparing here and the screen scaling on these. Let me know down, the, down in the comment section below if it is a screen scaling. I'm not entirely sure. This dropped quite late in my day. So yeah, I'm a little bit tired. There are a few new colorful icons for the weather conditions in the now separated at a glance widget, which was part of the QPR updates. I'm not sure if this has changed a few times during that beta phase, but I like the look personally. I think it's easier to see the weather conditions rather than those flat colors icons. At least that's that's my opinion. Now playing is also a new lock screen toggle option, which can let you quickly search for music around you, which is gonna be a little bit more consistent than the automatic pop-up that used to appear quite randomly just below the clock in the center of your screen. I like this option, but I must admit it isn't working 100% of the time for me and you do need to long press to do this. When you unlock your device, the weather widget also has changed on the at a glance widget on your home screen. I do think the icons for these weather conditions look a lot larger to my eye. Again, let me know down in the comment section if that's the same for you. Um, it might just be again a scaling issue with the devices I'm comparing here. You should also get the return of the users widget which was removed in a last QPR1 beta that we talked about here on the channel. Just open the widget panel and it is in its own section or users. It just lets you quickly switch or add on device user profiles if you have this enabled. So nothing special, but it is another nice toggle that I think, again, we'll probably get this in the stable release of QPR1 in a few weeks time or a few months time. If you're in the US and India and you have access to the AI mode within the Google application, you can actually set this to have a toggle to launch this from the Google search bar on your home screen. Just go into the Google application. You should have some options to toggle this on and therefore you can access AI mode right there from your home screen without too much friction. Within the settings application, there are a few changes here in this Canary build to the spacing of those sectional headers. I do think maybe the colors have been toned again in the dark mode. I'm, again, I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comment sections below what you think, but I will say the parental controls section being removed from digital wellbeing is a really long overdue change because it makes sense to be right in its own area of your phone. I think it's broken on my phone though, opening up just hangs up that new animating squiggle. So yeah, I can't access this, but it's better here as it's easy to find. You're not having to go into an extra menu to enable something that should be available right at your fingertips. In the display and touch section, we finally now have a toggle to enable or disable the iSearing enhanced HDR brightness. If it is available on your Pixel phone, just tap that and you'll get a little demo showing you how HDR images look which I think is really cool. Plus you can adjust the intensity to suit your particular eyes. I think this is something we should have on more phones. I absolutely love this. It's about time it's here, especially as sometimes HDR images can be absolutely blinding in specific lighting conditions. There is also a new low light mode that replaces the old when to show toggle within the screensaver mode. Tap this and you'll get more options to control what shows the screensaver. I think it's still limited to when you're charging. I'm not entirely sure. The wording's not particularly great here but I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, try that out for yourself. Let me know what you have experienced down in the comment sections as well. Another thing to see in settings is when you enable or disable a toggle within here, it now doesn't actually show color. It will go gray to show that that thing is disabled. This works across pretty much every single area of the system. So yeah, disable a toggle, enable a toggle, it will be in color and it will adhere to dynamic color settings, disable it, and it should be gray to show that it is inactive. You might also notice in the about phone section, the Android version is now listed as Canary in all capitals, and in other areas of your phone, it might be showing that as well. It's still Android 16 based, so don't worry about that. There is the Easter egg, is the Android 16 Easter egg, that hasn't changed, but the June 2025 patch, at least of this video going live, is installed here, not the most recent July patch. It's not the most up-to-date version, but I do think that will change as updates go out. And this does lead me to believe that we might see some more updates a little bit faster 
than we would ordinarily. Another thing to note is when the pop-up message appears when you restart or power on your phone for the first time after installing this, or once you've installed this, the warning is slightly different here as well. It's not the same as before. It gives you a lot more detail about what you're getting yourself into. And yeah, that is at the first Android Canary update, a brand new update track for the OS. It's definitely gonna get messy in the short term, but it is, uh, wait, you can tell I'm excited, right? I, I wanna ask you, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments sections below. Also, if you've seen anything that we've missed here, I know that it was a whistle stop tour of what we found, let me know down there as well. There's gonna be lots of crossover with each Android update, be that stable, be that beta, and now Canary. I can definitely see these things getting very confusing very, very quickly, but we will try our best to make sure you know what's going on at any single point in time. But all that's left for me to say is cheers for watching. Again, this is a very, very exciting time for Android. And, I'm, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely chomping at the bit to see what we see over the coming months. And yeah, as always, I will speak to you later.